Monsanto company applies for 2.63 million gallons of potable groundwater in the Waipahu, Wyalda groundwater management area to provide emergency backup irrigation for 2,052 net acres of seed corn and other various crops. Um, the principal concern in this matter is whether um, the emergency provisions, um, the emergency which Monsanto points to is, is a, a current and present problem. Um, clearly, the site in, in the Waihola ditch is a problem. Um, Monsanto did not provide any, act, any information to us about the nature of that emergency other than to allude to it. The staff has contacted the Ag Development Corporation, which manages the Waihola ditch, to find out what the current status of that site is. Uh, we've been informed that uh, ADC has the money for the design and the construction. Uh, we did a site visit earlier this month. Uh, the design engineering work is expected to finish late summer or mid-summer 2013. And they expect about 12 months to finish construction so that by presumably summer of 2014, the siphon uh, at risk will be repaired. Um, there are other farmers besides Monsanto that would suffer, of course, if the ditch were to, to go down. I'm not going to try to go through the analysis of um, all the warning Commission the permit requirements in Section 174C49A are laid out in the submittal and are not different from what we um, explained before. We have withdrawn uh, any request for declaratory ruling, so this application deals with two issues. One is the Monsanto's request for a uh, well construction and pump installation permit, which we recommend to the Commission to approve. And the second is a request for a water use permit, uh, which the staff recommends the Commission reject. Um, we would recommend that the Commission take those up separately since they raise separate issues. With regard to the, the water use permit, which is the primary concern here, the water use permit presents a serious problem for the Board or for the Commission, not just because of this application, but more generally. And that is that if backup permits are, are authorized, the Commission will essentially be granting double permits for a limited water resource that is a public resource, and that there will be no principal basis by which to deny other applications that are similarly proposed. That would, of course, lead to a situation where those with existing permits can point to the same facts that, that the, uh, Montana would point to and come in and make similar applications, and soon the central aquifer for Oahu, which the Port of Water Supply is principally concerned for our drinking water, will be allocated. One of the questions raised is whether uh, conditions in the permit could solve this problem. The short answer is no. And the reason for that is that even though from a management perspective, which we were at the board for Monsanto, we of course would like to have the backup. I mean, nobody argues about that. The question is not whether if you were the private operator you want, everybody would. The question is whether as the water commission we can allocate water on a statewide basis on this basis, and the short answer is we can't. And the, the means by which this emergency concern is solved is by for using the emergency provisions in the code. There's been some discussion of whether we could do the things that we propose to do. My view is we can. I understand that the Council for Consent <coughs> has different views, and she's certainly welcome to make those arguments. Um, that's what private clients pay lawyers to do. The question is whether this commission should follow the laws we understand or whether they should believe private counsel. We can, can follow the views that the commission has adopted in the past and in the future. Um, the water code sets up a, a water use permit that is not like water permits in other places. So long as the real beneficial use in that location and that quantity for that purpose is maintained, the water use permit remains valid indefinitely. It is not a temporary permit. Now, obviously, if there's non-use for a period, you can revoke it. Obviously, where, in the case of the Waihola Ditch litigation, for example, someone comes in and says, we're planting 3,000 acres, we're going to rotate things in, we have a plan, some things won't be planted for a while, that's all part of a permit application for actual use. It's understandable that some of that water may not be committed as you start to develop your plan. But that's not the same thing as saying there can be a water allocation for no use. 
But right now, a, 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 a current water use permit exists from the liability based system that supplies that, that land. So granting a second permit, even if it's not pumped for a while, is a water banking proposition, which is untenable under the code. Um, I can get into more detail, but that's those are the basic arguments you've heard before, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on them. And I'm happy to answer questions if you have them, and I can comment perhaps after my staff have spoken. Questions? So I, one comment that you just made, Bill. You said once you give them the allocation, it's, it's good to. It's indefinite. It's indefinite. But you said if they, have, if they don't use it, then. It's always then subject then to the revocation. Stop the revocation. Four years of non use, right. It's four years? Is that the. The statutory provision says if four years of non use raises a rebuttable presumption mm -hmm. that the use is continuing. Because the reasonable beneficial use requirement of the code in effect says for now in the future we're not going to allow somebody to get a permit and not use it because everybody has needs for water to share these resources. So if you're granted a permit and don't use it, it may be revoked. It's not an absolute requirement. But that's not a solution to the problem of not having use at all because there's a, there's a basic requirement you can't grant a permit for the, the non-use. Any questions? can follow the law as the commission understands it or as the private attorney um, suggested it should be. And I think, you know, the last time at the November meeting, how this ended was that the commission was going back into the special session to talk to the deputy attorney general. And, um, you know, my understanding is that that executive session didn't happen. And frankly, I urge the commission to, to talk to the attorney general because what we have here uh, a dispute between the, the staff uh, recommendations and what um, the, the problem. It's, you know, we appreciate the staff saying that they recognize that um, there should be an emergency source of water if the water leakage goes down. Um, we appreciate that, and so I think you know we're headed for the same place. It's just a matter of you know how do we get there, and frankly, I mean if. I believe that you know the emergency provision that the staff is recommending. If I, if I truly believe that worked, I mean I would not be here arguing about this you know, for month after month. My concern is just that that is not how the water code can be interpreted. Um, the deputy director said that should take up the water use permit separate from the well construction permit and pump installation permit because they're separate. Well, they're really not, because as I pointed out um, in the past, um, we do have the, the statutory provision that says that in a water use, in a water management area, you cannot withdraw water without a water use permit. And I still don't know how we get around that. Um, and that's, again, so you know, what we have here is a dispute about some legal interpretation of statute. So once again, you know, um, I urge you to uh, consult with your Deputy Attorney General um, and other than that, if, unless there are questions, well, one more thing. Um, the deputy director said that you know a water use permit is uh, permanent and indefinite, and there's no revocation except in the four-year use or lose provision. I suggest that that's incorrect. If you look at the standard condition, um, there is a provision that basically says that. Uh, if the rights of DHHL are interfered with by a water use permit, then you know, basically you can revoke it. And what we're proposing, what we had asked the commission to consider, 
is that all of the special conditions that we had proposed, that there's 10 special conditions, we believe address all of the water banking issues, address the double pounding issues, address this issue about uh, you know, um, permanence, that um, there are a number of provisions uh, in which Monsanto is willingly you know, uh, subjecting itself to reduction or replication uh, without a contested case. So we ask again that the Commission consider all the special conditions, see whether they, whether or not they actually address the issues that have been raised by staff. Um, and again, you know, I invite you to discuss with your Deputy Attorney General as to the legal interpretation of the statute that apparently staff and I have been disputed with. Questions for you? Suppose that uh, if we were to grant the allocation, that the other uh, users along the Wyoming Bridge could apply for uh, the water allocation, and at some point we'd be out of here where this allocation is all tied up. Um, you know, yes, I, I, I see that, and I see that that is a possibility. Uh, I'm not sure whether every one of them will do it. Uh, you know, speaking of well is pretty expensive and that, you know, um, there are some uh, farmers who are using like holy ditch water who I think are financially capable of doing it, others may not be. Um, but yes, I, I, I do see that, you know, there are others that will probably, you know, want to join in. Um, and that was one of the reasons that we had uh, proposed as a special condition that when you reach 95% of the sustainable yield, that, you know, you can revisit all of these. Um, backup allocations, reduce it if you want to, revoke it if you want to. Um, but, you know, we, we really believe, and I've been hearing it meeting after meeting, that, you know, uh, the commission is very supportive of agriculture, and I think this is, I, I think you've heard from the Dole people, I think you've heard from community schools several meetings ago. You know, in agriculture, I mean, backup water is important to, to all agriculture, and, and you know, that's, that's what we're asking for here. Any other questions for you? Okay. Thank you very, very much, Yvonne. Thank you. So, we have a suggestion. We have a quick uh, recommendation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You want to take public testimony? Yeah. All right. Is there a problem with that? Is there any mission to testify on this agenda? Go ahead. Come on. Wait. staff concerns regarding um, the water use permit application um, that may result in a private, you know, indefinite reservation of public trust water uh, as backup to a whole different system. Um, we would like to reiterate that this may present an alternative opportunity. Um, given applicant's demonstration um, that um, the unused wildlife aquifer can currently meet its needs as well as um, potential future needs of water water supply, pollen homelands, um, and so forth. And given that the applicant has asserted that it does have the uh, ability to tap into the wild aquifer, um, and given you know, the applicant's um, assertion, I guess, that the wild system is unstable and unreliable to um, provide necessary chances for their needs, um, this may be an opportunity to um, grant the, al the application for water from the wild aquifer, but um, also return the applicant's current allocation from the wild ditch system. Um, and that water would, you know, go back to the normal side and serve the ecological and cultural and domestic agriculture purposes, public trust purposes that it would have served. Um, so in summary, if the wild water is better and more accessible, then why not replace wild water with wild water? Any questions for me? Any other questions for the office of the I just want a clarification that 
as far as the application as it stands now, which is to uh, uh, take uh, the groundwater from uh, the Wailaha Aquifer as backup. Um, could you clarify the position on um, that? As a, as a backup allocation, we would, um, our office has um, some concerns with that, um, the application consistency with the water code. Thank you. Could you explain that a little bit more? Um, uh, I mean, I think um, um, well, I should initially already kind of spoke to that, but basically, um, you'd be allocating for a, a not, you won't be allocating for active use. It'll be for a hypothetical use based on uncertain contingency, and to the extent that um, basically. The reasonable beneficial you know, requirements of the water code you know, require that public trust water be used actively, um, and without requiring that there be an active use at some point, that's definitely <coughs> um, it's time on to water banking or a private reservation of public trust water. Okay, thank you. What else we Aloha, everybody. Again, my name is Al Kwanaki Aloha, and uh, I don't like being here, so it's my kuyama. Uh, I asked you guys the last time I came before you to please look into Monsanto and what it's about, to Google it, to YouTube it. There's a lot of valuable information of the monster that you're letting into the door. Now, with no treaty, no option. With no treaty, no annexation, you have to realize there's 120 years of illegal occupation. And you guys are deciding the future of my children and my children's children's children with this monster that you're going to let into the door and tap into our veins, our vibes. It's very important that you consider that, <coughs> okay, I'm asking you, you have to realize you guys are acting illegally and you're part of genocide and until you guys realize that you're responsible and caring and continuing this against my culture, against my race, against my aina. I'm also speaking for Kolek Mairi Aligi Hawaiian Civic Club we are also opposed to this. Mahalo, thank you. Please, look in your heart. If you have children, think about their health. Look into my uncle, it's have a Mahalo. Anyone else? Who should we get something? Good morning. Good morning. The staff made a, a really good argument against the, uh, uh, the groundwater use permit, and uh, I have to agree with them there. But um, I have to register my um, thoughts against the uh, construction of the well permit. Um, I don't think uh, putting a well anywhere up there uh, on that Montana land is, is, is good for anybody's health. Um, looking at the Department of Health's uh, website, uh, the Clean Water website, the, uh, uh, there's been a study done in uh, uh, 25 cities in the, in the nation. Uh, Hawaii and Oahu has uh, the second highest level of clean system water supply. Um, the EPA standard is what, 0.02, I think, or something like that. And looking at, and look at their, their studies on, the, on their site, um, a lot of the wells on, on Oahu are at that level or above. If you get to you get down to Kenya, and it's quadruple. Uh, any of the other wells. Um, so I, I am very concerned to put another well up there in Kenya or anywhere on Monsanto property for that matter. Um, uh, it is putting our, our water in, in, in jeopardy. And plus, putting this, putting this well into the, the aquifer is, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, I'm not a scientist, but it, it's, it's insanity. Um, I'd like to know what we're doing to, to test our water up there, uh, downstream in the aquifer, aquifer from, that, uh, from that property. 
before you guys uh, see it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come to testify as a Brother, I came to testify before I don't want this water rush. I already let you guys know how I feel. I just come to listen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mahalo. Aloha, my name is Naomi Carmona. Uh, I'd like to disclose I'm the Executive Secretary to the Council of Birds. I'm also uh, the founder of an organization, a nonprofit called Base Against Biotech, and our sole mission is to expose the dangers of companies like Monsanto. So I'm just going to do a quick review. Uh, the you highest. And also, your friends are testimony to what's before us. To the agenda item regarding Monsanto's request for a well building permit and pump and allocation. So, uh, Monsanto has a history of being recklessly irresponsible with the use of water. There are huge lawsuits against them. There's one in uh, particular in Alabama. By the way, glyphosate, which is one of the main ingredients of Roundup, which they sell quite a bit and engineer their crops to require the heavy use of. Uh, those that don't actually have pesticides engineered into the food. This is classified by the EPA as a class 3 toxic substance, and that's fatal to an adult at 30 grams and has been linked to over 20 adverse uh, health effects and peer reviewed biomedical research. So that's what they'll be using. They have a history of contaminating groundwater. A study published in the Journal of Environmental Toxicology and Chemistry in March of 2011 collected samples from two growing seasons in uh, Mississippi and Iowa found that glyphosate was detected in 60 to 100 percent of all air and rain samples. So even though the company says that it uh, breaks down and biodegrades and it's actually environmentally friendly and leaves the soil <laughs> clean, that's not true. And the highest court in France recently found that as well and uh, classified glyphosate as dangerous for the environment. Actually, the European Union classified it as that. Um, we actually don't even want Monsanto here at all, uh, quite frankly, me and uh, quite a few of my friends, at least a couple thousand, um, and our numbers are growing every day as people realize that Hawaii is the site for the majority of open air experimental GMO field trials. And they do, actually the chemicals that they use not only contaminate the groundwater, but kill the microorganisms in the soil that we need to create a healthy environment for plant life, period. Um, the EPA has an enforceable drinking water standard. Uh, which is very important. At the moment, it's 0.1 milligrams per liter, and like Jen said, the Cunia well where Monsanto's main Oahu site is, is, is four times most of the other wells on Oahu. Um, two parts per billion of hexavalent chromium, uh, whereas right now the California Environmental Protection Agency is pushing for 0.06 as the level, whereas the Cunia well on Monsanto actually has 1.2 already, highest level on Oahu is uh, is two. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen Erin Brockovich. Honolulu is one of her next targets because the level of contamination due to things like hexavalent chromium and chromium-6. So also um, in Reuters, there was a study on agricultural chemicals such as the ones Monsanto used, and the contamination in air and water is significant. So this is um, a very major concern. They should not have access to Hawaii's water. We're importing over 90% of our food, and these companies are here growing experimental uh, field trials. We're basically being treated like lab rats and the poor residents who live across the street. My God, I mean, even just visiting the sites, I felt the effects just in the air in my own body, so you can hardly imagine. They're growing seeds. This is their seed industry. Three to four times as many crops per year they can produce here as other places because Hawaii is so fertile, and they're taking that away. Ask anybody from Molokai what Monsanto is doing to Molokai. And so um, we can't afford to allow companies like this to bank water resources. Our vivas are abundant. It's our prosperity. Um, and I would, I would definitely take it as an affront to the hopes of sustainability on these islands and any level of restoration of the Ahupua'a that we might be able to sustain ourselves without shipping in this food while well, we're allowing these kind of companies to grow seed that's going to be shipped off and make the state no money. And not only that, but poison our air, our water, and ourselves. So I would really hope um, that you would 
not allow them any more power and any more water. We don't even want them here, and the movement is growing, so I hope that they'll uh, be gone soon. And um, the French scientists from the University of Cayenne found a very low level of glyphosate, which is even lower than the application recommended for Roundup, um, actually damage human placental cells and within 24 hours cause total cell death in embryonic kidney and placental cells. So, um, <laughs> let's see, anything else really important here? We hope that you don't allow them to contaminate not only our water supply, but the ground around them. You know, they, it's a, this is the same ingredients that are active in Agent Orange, which I'm sure you've heard before. Uh, but quite literally, they're continuing on. And this is resulting in a number of lawsuits, like West Virginia. There are 80,000 local residents suing Monsanto for exposure and cancer-causing effects of 2,4,5-T, which is half of, of that. You also have 2,4-D and, and glyphosate. So these are very dangerous chemicals. They've already been fined $1.2 million for trying to conceal the discharge of contaminated wastewater. And in 1995, they were ordered to pay $41 million uh, to a Texas company due to concerns over their hazardous waste dumping. And so they actually rank fifth among U.S. corporations in EPA's toxic release inventory, having discharged 37 million pounds of toxic chemicals into the air, land, water, mm -hmm. and underground. So they're not transparent by any means um, and, and are actually now also being sued in Alabama, uh, where residents have developed PCB levels, another one of the toxins they produce, hundreds or thousands of times the average. And the Washington Post declared that for nearly 40 years while producing the now banned industrial coolants known as PCBs, Monsanto routinely just charged toxic waste into a West Anniston Creek and dumped millions of pounds of PCBs into oozing open pit landfills. So uh, these charges were found to be so outrageous in character and extreme in degree, this is by the jury, as to go beyond all possible bounds of decency, so as to be regarded as atrocious and utterly intolerable in civilized society. In 1966, the uh, Monsanto managers themselves discovered that fish dumped in a local creek near one of their facilities turned belly up within 10 seconds, spurting blood and shedding skin as it had been dumped into boiling water. Yes, yes, they're totally irresponsible with water. Please don't give them any more power. Mahalo. Anyone else who should testify on this matter? On that side? Well, I'm not used to speaking in public hearings. I'm just a mother of three, and um, I'm a member of GMO Free Oahu. Um, my, my name is Mitsuko Hayakawa. I'm a mother of three. And I am here as a concerned citizen and a member of GMO for, uh, Free Oahu. I ask you that you not support the slaughter permit from Monsanto. Um, they are very well, um, it's very well documented that this company has lied and deceived and poisoned the public for many decades. Um, and I'm certainly concerned about our children and our future. And. Um, to allow them to use our public resources for poisoning our land and putting our children at risk, I, I, I ask you not to allow them to do that. Um, it would just be foolish to believe whatever, whatever they say or whatever good intentions they say they have at this point um, with over 100 years of, um, of lying and poisoning um, everywhere around the world. And, and I personally would not want them here in Hawaii. I would like them to leave. And, um, and overall, there's no real benefit for the residents here um, by their presence and use of their water. Uh, they're, use, they're growing um, crops for export. And if you're doing experimental crops for I don't know what they're doing, but um, for GMOs, and um, <coughs> really not benefiting the average residents here in Hawaii. Um, and we, the regular residents here, have to pay for all of this, and I don't think that's fair. So this, um, I don't think the people of Hawaii should have to give up more of our natural resources 
um, to see the need and, and greed of this company. I would like to ask you please, Mr. Jonathan, start this thing. Who gave those people Monsanto permission to leave those six wells on Maui? If you people are supposed to be our public land development corporation. Are we not that? <laughs> <laughs> not the public land development corporation, this is the water commission. Okay. The the permission for a water use permit comes in a water management area. There's no one has ever requested that that area be made into a water management area, under which basis uh, the commission would uh, be uh, uh, managing the resource as we are doing in the area that we're talking about. Okay, so um, what you're telling me is they can do anything they like. They don't need anyone to The short answer is if the company of mine is going to do a soft set of permits because it's a separate process. Because it's a non-designated water management area. It doesn't come under the purview of water. Some of it does, but well permits do not. So the county of mine, they do. They do. Yeah. Even if it's a non they do, but they <coughs> any well in the state has to come to control the, the commission. But the commission, when they adopted the standards for well construction, and there's been two versions, ensure that the wells are constructed properly so that they do not contaminate um, from the surface. 
and ensure that the pump tests and so forth are, are done properly to assess the impacts on the aquifer and other wells in the area. So they go through this, this process. It's just that there's a set of standards that the commission has delegated to the staff to, to administrate. To reiterate, for anyone can drill a well as long as they adhere to a lot of big wells on our level mm -hmm. without getting permits from the state of Hawaii. Regardless what island they own, this is the main seat of all Hawaiian islands. Now, they should be getting a permit from DPP to doing something like this. That is my question. How can they be doing this? Who gives them the permission? That's what I want to know. Your board or the water supply? DPP? Who? Who gives this, this corporation this kind of authority, this kind of power? No one should have this kind of power in our land. Anybody want water, they should get water. Too. We all get water from Border Water Supply. That's what Border Water Supply is for and what's free is to watch over our water. Water is free. Water comes from our water. Okay. Now, I would like to know who gives these people the permission to go dig in them well. I think it's much more complicated, but if you can get together with Roy, Roy can give you references to the water code. And okay. I, I'd like to just add one thing. Um, to if there's anyone interested in knowing who is drilling wells, who is getting permits to drill wells, that information is available on the water resources bulletin that is available on the Water Commission website, and it's updated every month. So if you look there, you know, for instance, wells by Monsanto, wells by County of Maui, or Border Water Supply, Honolulu, all the wells that get drilled, many, many months or years before the well gets drilled, it shows up on that site in that uh, bulletin. So if you're interested in understanding about this, uh, that would be the place to go for information and uh, to, to understand what, what, what's happening. Well, now they're trying to get another permit to dig one more well. They already dig one. Now they're trying to get you guys to give approval for them to dig one more. Oh, wait a No. We cannot allow these three corporations to come in and do these kind of things. They're already poisoning our land with Roundup, Agent Orange, and other pesticides. Very bad. You know? So now, we will give them control of our water, let them poison that too. I don't think so. I don't want these people on this land. I want them out of here. Bottom line, we got to move these people out of here. They don't belong in Hawaii. They need to go somewhere else and do <coughs> their testing and play the games on plants and animals. We don't need people here that's not going to be here to grow food, which we can all consume safely and eat. They want to grow something on our land and take control of our land. They need to grow vegetables and fruits, which will help us to survive. Nothing else. You want to grow anything else, go somewhere else. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. One more time. Anyone else wishing to testify on this agenda item? If not, public testimony is closed. So all those in favor of the application, raise your hand. All those opposed to the application, raise your hand. You guys don't come. The motion, the application, uh, fail. Application fail. Know me uh, and uh, Carly. Any any reaction from anyone? And we have Chris Smith back there. Too. I feel so blessed. I'm so elated that uh, at least one body of governance is totally corrupted. <laughs> the Water Commission uh, failed to approve their application, which is amazing news for us. These people wanted two point. Uh, what was it? Two point six. Two point six five million, 6 million gallons, gallons of our water a day. 
to bank in their own well. Uh, most of their uh, BT crops especially use 10 times the amount of water uh, that traditional conventional varieties use. Not to mention our Viar water, our Viar water, that's our abundance, that's our prosperity, as Carly said. Very the lovely. life of the land. There you go. <laughs> and they cannot have our life, and they cannot have this land. And we made it very clear today that uh, we don't want them here, that our numbers are growing every day. We don't even want them here. Absolutely At not. We don't want to give them our water. Yeah. These people are totally irresponsible with water. I think that the at least enough of the commission got it today to block it. Three right. to three. So three you know, to three. Yeah. Three to three. So Monsanto can't pick any one person out, but their uh, attorney was in there. She's a fascinating woman. Um, <laughs> she seemed to think that she didn't need to reiterate her testimony for That's Monsanto right. because oh oh counsel just talk to your deputy uh, attorney your deputy general attorney <laughs> because she actually used to be in that position and so uh, she felt that it was sufficient for them to just talk to that guy but we won and we won finally Ooh, South okay. in Hawaii against freaking Monsanto <laughs> oh God just get out now Carly I think I last saw you um, at the city council where they were trying trying to get them to take up the GMO labeling. Uh, yep, and I didn't hear it. Didn't. <laughs> Not at all. What do you think about this decision? I'm, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be more thankful. Like, you'll see later that I got all fired up and I was about to <laughs> break right. down and cry. So you gave good testimony. Totally, thank you. Totally, totally worth it and I'm totally happy and like Nomi said, thank you. God, <laughs> thank Akua that, you know, at least there are a few people with their heads on right and their hearts still there. Now, I'm thank suspecting, God. and I think a lot of people are expecting another application by them again okay. soon. I'm sure so. I've got to stay on top of it. Stay on that. top Every of it. Every single person, James Macy has been a saint to the James people Macy. in this regard as far as keeping on top of, um, of their... Shameful action. And people can go to uh, Babes Against Biotech on you know Facebook. Facebook.com slash Babes Against Biotech. we got a lot going on. We're about to come out with our online magazine. And, mm -hmm. and any day now, the 2013 <laughs> calendar. We're just so busy with these corrupts. I mean, yeah. it's really important that we be here yeah. all day. So Thank proud you. of this. Yay. Yeah, Thank you so much. Thank you. Here's another guy. Hey, this is Chris Nova Smith from the Occupy. What do you think? Oh, I'm glad to hear uh, that they denied it. You know, I was starting to question the fact if uh, they actually even knew why they wanted the water. You know, but uh, I guess it doesn't matter. They denied it, so it's one, you know, one for us. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think you're right that they'll be uh, coming back trying to do something else. There's gonna, you know. there's gonna be more from them. That's yeah. for sure. Definitely. I think more people need to get uh, more outspoken with what's going on. People need to get more outspoken. That, I, I think so too. You know, yeah, Hawaii we, were too polite. There were no signs in right. there. People yeah, don't speak out. Even if they're not willing to speak, just be there. Support, you know. And be kind of rude. It's okay. That's what I tell people. Yep. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to call it Howley style, but hey, sometimes you got to speak out. <laughs> So thanks for coming out here, Chris, hey. Nova, and cool. I'll talk to you later. Good Thank good. you much. And we're signing off now. Oh, goodbye.